Wow, some big breaking news from London. It looks like they're about to roll out huge, sweeping, stop-and-frisk policies to enforce their draconian knife ban. The agents are taking to social media in force, showing that this is about to be weaponized big time. They're trying to get the public to clamor for police stopping them on a whim and searching them TSA style for knives and weapons. They want people just to be molested walking down the street by police officers, patting them down, metal detectors, etc. This is fucking Nazi-esque. These government PSYOP operations where they send thousands of agents and all their bots onto the internet to try to mislead us pisses me off so much. And whenever I see it, I call it out. I'm guessing people will get mad at me and have fallen into the trap of thinking that having a totalitarian police state disarming everyone is a good idea. But I don't care. This is elementary. This is not a complicated riddle. This is simple. They've been prepping this for weeks and weeks and weeks, trying to see discontent in Khan's political opposition that he's not doing enough about knife violence. Khan's political opposition should look at what Khan's doing with knives and saying he's doing way too much. He's taking away all of our freedom. He's banning tools of self-defense, forcing you to rely on the monopoly of government violence. Hey, everybody. Some really big news from London. It looks like they're ready to grab people's knives. So as you know, in the UK, they've already grabbed people's guns. And in large part, the knives. But we're seeing a big push now for more knife confiscation. And that's what this video is about. So what I'm seeing is a ton of accounts on Twitter pushing messages like this. Stop and search saves lives. The UK Independence Party. Well, shame on the UK Independence Party. Bunch of fucking Nazis. We need to stop anyone walking down the street to see if they're carrying a knife so we can punish them under the assumption they were going to go stab somebody. This is fucking lunacy. So I don't know anything about the UK Independence Party, but that's fucking disgusting. And this is where this is going. They want to hyper-enforce the disarmament policies with stop and frisk. Now, yesterday, there was a reported death, which sounds tragic. Now, I don't know exactly what happened. I don't want to take the government's word for it, of course. But I am seeing what's happening in the wake of this stabbing on Twitter. Keep in mind, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of government agent operatives running around on the internet, pretending to be our friends, pretending to be our colleagues, but they're ready to stab us in the back at any point. So the narrative I've seen pushed ad nauseum for the past two days on Twitter, and it seems really inauthentic to me, is why doesn't Khan send all the police around stopping and frisking all the children and the adults alike and throw anyone in jail for carrying a blade for 10 years? These are police agents, I'm pretty sure. These are government PSYOP agents setting the stage for the next leg of the totalitarian fascism. So it's like the same thing we see in the United States with people saying, why won't President Biden solve gun crime? But it's for knives. So based off all of this agent activity I'm seeing on Twitter, at the very least, this is a crisis that's being hijacked by agents for weapon confiscation. Now, they said that this happened, I believe, on a city bus. So I wouldn't be surprised if they start patting people down or using metal detectors as a condition of using these buses. And as they force people off the street with ULEZ, more and more people will have to use these buses. So I want to say it sounds tragic what happened to this girl. And my condolences to her family. But it's very obvious and self-evident to me that a lot of agents are running around in the wake of this trying to get more knife regulation in London. Which is ridiculous if you've tracked how this issue has been handled over the years. Because they've already been grabbing people's knives. And the fact that this happened with children is especially interesting as well as we look at some of these laws on the book. So here's the current law as described on the UK government website on a page called Selling, Buying, and Carrying Knives and Weapons. The maximum penalty for an adult carrying a knife or weapon illegally is either four years in prison, an unlimited fine, or both. An unlimited fine. For carrying a knife. You'll get a prison sentence if you're convicted of carrying a knife or weapon illegally more than once. So that's like a guarantee. So if somebody likes to be armed in case of the need to defend themselves, they're liable to be sent away to jail with an unlimited fine. Well, some people might say, well, that's just for illegally 
carrying a knife. Well, let's look at the law. What is illegally carrying a knife? It's illegal to carry most knives or any weapons in public without a good reason. Or sell most knives or any weapons to anyone under the age of 18. Now, they let people carry pocket knives, micro knives, with edges less than three inches. Now, based off this note here, which says, in Scotland, you're allowed to sell 16 and 17-year-olds cutlery and kitchen knives. So presumably, in England, in Wales, you can't. Which is absurd. Look at these reasons they give as possible good reasons for carrying a knife or weapon in public. For your work. For religious reasons. As part of any national costume. Now what about the best reason to be armed? Defending good people and yourself. Self-defense and the defense of your neighbors and the people in your vicinity. No, that doesn't count. It says a court will decide if you've got a good reason to carry a knife or a weapon. And they have this huge list of knives and weapons you're not allowed to have. Disguised knives. Flick knives, gravity knives, switchblade, or automatic knife. Knuckle duster, which looks like those little metal things you put on your fingers. So you can't even wrap your fingers in metal in the UK. That's crazy. You can't have a sword. You can't have a stealth knife. You can't have a truncheon or a baton. Now, it's illegal to even possess these weapons. Not just bringing them into public, it's illegal to possess them. Absolutely evil. And this is already the current law. So why are all these agents running around demanding that Khan, quote, solve the knife problem? Solve knife violence. I find this infuriating. I hate covert government psyops. Where they sick thousands of agents on us on the internet. So after reviewing this UK knife law, I see that the situation is much more dire than I thought. The knife grab has already happened. So where's this leading us now for all these agents to be clamoring for Khan to, quote, solve knife violence? The next step for this tyrannical government would be to hyper-enforce these laws or to outlaw even pocket knives. But what I'm expecting is much more stop and frisk. And they're trying to get both sides on board. So the socialist side of the equation loves giving the government a monopoly on violence, which they use for their political ends and to control people. So the challenge for the UK government are all of these freedom fighters who should be opposing these types of evil, disarming policies and the thought of giving the government a monopoly on force and violence. And I think sometimes, obviously, violence is called for. If somebody starts to assault you and threaten your very right to exist, then I think violence is called for. So I don't know how any people who are actually anti ulez would look at the laws on the books concerning knives and say, this isn't enough. We need Khan to solve knife violence. This is really weird. Let me know what you think in the comments below because everything about this screams J Trig and 77th Brigade and maybe their colleagues around the world, say the U.S. Army, the Australian Army, the Five Eyes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I just see a ton of really unexplainable posts, trying to get the anti ulez people to fall into the trap of demanding that their enemy, Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, quote, solve knife violence. And what could be more absurd than that? So let's look at the recent history of the knife grab. First, let's look at the Offensive Weapons Act of 2019. So there is an Offensive Weapons Act of 2019, which introduced new restrictions on the sales and delivery of knives online. They restricted sales and delivery of knives online. And the law made it illegal to possess certain weapons like zombie knives and knuckle dusters in private. So here's the thing. They use these events where a criminal kills somebody. And then they take all the weapons from the law-abiding people, just making the matters worse. Because now the good people can't defend themselves. In 2008, stop and search powers were expanded under Section 60 of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act of 1994. This allowed police to search anyone in a designated area without reasonable grounds. And they seized many weapons. Now, why do you think these people had weapons? Do you think it was because they were about to go stab somebody? Or might it be for self-defense? We know the police aren't going to help you. So one obvious answer is to take it into your own hands. But they're trying to outlaw that. And after every tragedy, 
They tried to spin it to achieve more totalitarian control. Then there was the Knives Act of 1997. This made it illegal to sell knives to anyone under 18. It also banned the carrying of knives in public without good reason. So they've already banned knives in public. So whenever they ban weapons on the streets, they're basically saying, just by having something that's possibly deadly, you're guilty of pre-crime because you were going to go stab somebody with that knife. And these are, of course, just absurd assumptions that are mostly always false. So what are all these agents on the internet working towards when they keep demanding and insisting that Khan, quote, solve the knife problem? Another interesting bill in 2005, the Violent Crime Reduction Act, allowed courts to place restrictions on individuals to keep them from carrying knives. In London, Operation Blunt and Operation Skepter have run periodic intensive policing operations since 2008 to tackle knife crime through stop and search raids, weapon sweeps, and working with communities. And finally, look here. Mayor Sadiq Khan's London Knife Crime Strategy 2017 brought together prevention, enforcement, and victim support measures and invested heavily in early intervention for youth at risk of involvement in knife crime. Knife possession offenses have been defined as having an article with blade or point in a public place, possession of offensive weapon, using someone to look after an offensive weapon. Wow. Possession of weapon offenses have also increased. Yeah, because you tyrants just outlawed so many weapons and are disarming the people. Why are people carrying and using knives? The majority are for self-defense and protection. Wow, but let's throw them in jail and give them an unlimited fine. This is disgusting. This is a long document, 80 pages. Sadiq Khan's knife prevention, knife crime strategy. And now we're seeing all of these agents on Twitter clamoring and demanding that this strategy get implemented and that stop and frisk intensifies. What is wrong with you people? Are you fools or sellouts? So this is a pet issue of Sadiq Khan. He wants to grab those knives. They've already grabbed the guns using the same types of excuses. So I'm not saying everybody that's pushing for Khan to solve the knife crime is a government agent, but I do think that they're doing the government's bidding. And what really seals the deal for me is seeing the internet activity around this. I search Twitter every day for ULEZ. And for the weeks leading up to this, there have been a lot of people putting messaging out. I suspect them to be government operatives saying, Khan is spending all this money on a ULEZ, but he's not solving the knife crime. He's not solving the knife crime. He's not solving the knife crime. When it comes to propaganda and to mind control and social engineering, the best time to social engineer is before an event happens. If you know something's going to happen, it's much easier to plant the seeds ahead of time so that people jump into a desired behavior after the event happens. And I think that's what we've been subjected to for weeks and weeks and weeks. And they design these things to make them propagate, to make them go viral. So I know a lot of people take these lines and they sound good. They're designed to sound good. And people repeat them. Oh, look at this damn ULEZ system. Obviously, they should be going after knife crime. And people say, oh, that sounds good. Look, they got some hearts. They got some likes, some reposts. Let me say that myself. And then boom, there's a stabbing. The news jumps out. They pull out all the heartstrings. And I think that people should be sad about this if it happened. But what's sadder still is a nation of people are going to have their rights taken from them. They already have, but I think it's going to get worse. And basically the government's going to use the death of this girl to infringe on so many people's right to defend themselves. And what do you think this world's going to? What do you think they're prepping for? There's a saying here in the United States, whenever they try to do a gun grab, if they're trying to grab your guns, that probably means there's something coming up that's going to make you want to shoot them. And that's why they don't want you armed, right? So I think we might be seeing a similar situation in the UK where politicians and these greedy bankers and these fat cats are afraid that somebody's just going to walk up and give them some vigilante justice. So it seems like all these agents have been ready to pounce, just waiting for someone to get stabbed. But what's interesting is the agents are pretending to be anti ulez activists. And there are all these Twitter accounts just bombarding people's replies, pushing this agenda like, oh my gosh, Khan is so evil, he's not solving 
knife crime. And I'm sitting back. I'm like, this is so obviously a knife grab. And I think they want the opposition, the people who should be resisting this, tooth and nail, to actually be the ones clamoring for it first, thinking they're getting a political victory, scoring points against the Ulez, scoring points against Khan. When you're playing right into Khan's hand, if you're demanding he, quote, solve knife crime, what does that even mean? You want Khan to grab everyone's knives, including your own? You want Khan to search people when they're walking down the street, including you? Does anybody think this is a good idea?